So, um, I had to wait for this example, um, you know, to, to discuss this example, uh, because I had not, well, when we, when we talked of uh, uh, weak law of large numbers and uh, strong law of large numbers, I had not, uh, you know, uh, talked about uh, the Poisson process. So, I waited till I had, uh, you know, introduced the topic of uh, Poisson process to uh, give you this example. And in fact, we, uh, even when we were talking of law of large numbers, I had shown you some examples. So, this is also one of them, uh, one of uh, an interesting example. Now, here you see um, inter arrival times are exponentially distributed with mean 1 by lambda, right, because the arrival rate is lambda. So, uh, we, the, we have shown that the inter arrival times will be exponentially distributed and the mean time would be 1 by that means, mean, uh, mean uh, inter arrival time would be 1 by lambda. So, that means, the average waiting time between two occurrences is 1 by lambda. And so, the um, uh, number of arrivals, mean arrival rate is lambda, right. So, hence in a, inter a time interval of length t, we uh, should expect around lambda t occurrences, right. If lambda is the uh, mean arrival rate, so, therefore, per unit time. So, therefore, in a time interval t, uh, you would expect on the average uh, lambda t occurrences, uh, occur lambda, lambda t arrivals, right. So, then um, and since our notation for the Poisson process uh, for the number of arrivals up to time t is n t. So, therefore, uh, we expect that n t and lambda t should be close. And this is what the uh, weak law of large numbers and strong law of, law of large numbers is all about. So, let us just look at this and we will show that uh, yes, uh, the ratio of n t by uh, uh, this will be um, n t by t would be close to lambda, right. Because if you want lambda t to be close to lambda, uh, n t to be close to lambda t, then uh, n t upon t should be close to lambda. This is the whole idea, okay. Uh, so, uh, let us look at the uh, uh, look at the proof, interesting. Now, here, um, yeah, I should have written the word proof here. Now, uh, for uh, let t be some positive time, right, and then we want to show, I said it is there. So, we want to show that the limit of n t upon t as n t goes to infinity is equal to lambda. So, this probability is 1, that means this is a certain event. So, as uh, you take the limit and you allow n t to grow uh, large, then your ratio n t by t would be lambda. Uh, okay. Now, let us look at the proof. So, um, See, this is the thing. You know, uh, when uh, you, for the Poisson process, when you are when we are looking at the uh, arrival process and so on, then my S and T is the moment of the nth arrival up to time t. This is what we have been denoting. And later on, when I discuss the uh, death, birth, and death process, at that time S and T was the uh, you know. Uh, time elapsed, because remember I was looking at the waiting distribution for the waiting time in the queue, and then I also use the symbol S and T, but that time it was the waiting time for the uh, n plus 1 th arrival. That means, S and T denoted the time at which the uh, n th service got completed, right. So, here it is S and T is the moment of the n th arrival up to time t. So, I hope uh, be, with the reference to the context, the things will be clear, because here we are only talking of the, um, uh, and I have not introduced the con uh, waiting time and so on up to this point. So, therefore, this should be ok. So, um, S n t is the moment of the n t th arrival up to time t, and therefore, S n t plus 1 will be the moment of the n t plus 1. So, the, in, uh, the uh, inequality that we are writing here, S n t less than or equal to t less than or equal to n, n S n t plus 1 should be actually replaced by S n t less than or equal to t and strictly less than S n t plus 1. Since n t th uh, ar arrivals have occurred up to time t and n s t is the uh, time of the n t th ar ar arrival. Okay. And so, therefore, um, uh, when the S n t, when the n t plus 1 th arrival occurs, that will be the time n s t plus 1. So, that will have to be bigger than t. So, I want to make that clear and that is why uh, this should be replaced by the strict inequality here. Okay. That is because we say that S n t is the uh, time at which the n t th arrival has occurred and that up to time t 
and so uh, S n t plus 1 the time arrival for the n t plus 1 th arrival will take uh, will be more than t right after t arrival. In fact, um, our understanding is that you know n t is the max of n uh, such that S n is less than or equal to t. So, that means, up to time t we do not expect uh, there, there are no more arrivals than n t okay. and therefore, uh, this inequality is valid. That means, t is greater than or equal to S n t, but if there is one more arrival then certainly that time will exceed t. This is the whole idea, right? So up to time t, uh, S n t is the number of uh, the moment of the nth arrival. Uh, this should be capital N. Sorry, I should write here is. This is capital N. So that means the time of the nth arrival has to be less than or equal to t, but n t plus one th arrival will exceed the time t. So this is the understanding, right? Okay. So with this understanding, you now divide the, uh, in, both, the or both the inequalities by n t, and therefore you get s n t by n t less than or equal to t upon n t. This is less than or equal to s n t plus one upon n t, right? Or uh, remember, the like x i's are the interarrival times. So therefore, uh, s n t will also be equal to x one plus x two plus x n t. So, they, uh, when you add up the inter arrival times, they will all add up to your s n t. So, sigma i varying from 1 to n t, sigma x i divided by n t and this is less than or equal to t upon n t, then this is uh, this here the summation will go up to n t plus 1. So, you will add up the inter arrival time for the uh, for the n t plus 1 at the arrival up to this thing, right. So, n t to n t plus 1 at the arrival, this will be this, right. Now, sigma x i is are independent. Remember, we have shown this. We give the poison process, poison arrival process. Then the inter arrival times would be exponentially distributed, and they are <coughs> independent, identically distributed. Each has the mean one by lambda. So then the conditions for uh, your law of large numbers is satis are satisfied, and therefore by the strong law of large numbers, uh, sigma x i i varying from one to n t divided by n t will converge to 1 by lambda with probability 1. This is our strong law of large numbers. And since this is also the same series, you know, your n t plus 1, but you are allowing this to go to infinity, you are allowing n t to go to infinity. So, therefore, um, this and this have the same limit, which is 1 by lambda, right, the mean of x i okay, with probability 1. And so, uh, by the sandwich theorem, because here you see this is converging to 1 by lambda, this is converging to 1 by lambda. So, t by n t has no choice, it has to converge to 1 by lambda. Okay. And so, therefore, uh, by the sandwich theorem of the uh, uh, limits, t upon n t will converge to 1 by lambda with probability 1, or n t upon t will, because we have taken t to be positive. Uh, so, n t by t will converge to lambda with probability 1. So, therefore, um, you know for the Poisson process. So, now again as I told you that the uh, situation for uh, uh, you know uh, the law of large numbers is basically used to estimate the mean of the population. And so, you go on making observations and we say that the observations are uh, independent identically distributed because they are coming from the same population. So, then the average uh, we expect the average to converge to the mean of the population. So, here also the same thing for the Poisson process what we have shown is because n t is the number of arrivals in time t. So, this ratio will converge to lambda the mean arrival rate and therefore, we can go on observing the uh, values uh, number of arrivals in a particular time and then uh, up to time interval t and the ratio will converge to lambda. So, if in case your lambda is large, uh, if, if your lambda is large, then uh, you will have to make the observations for a longer time period, because your n t will have to be sufficiently large and therefore, um, that of course, makes sense. So, therefore, uh, uh, this gives you a good way of wanting to uh, trying to estimate uh, the value of lambda. So, the queuing model I am going to talk about today is uh, m m 1, it is called m m 1 and I will ex explain uh, in a while why we call it m m 1. So, here the whole idea is that you have a source from which your customers are coming to some service facility, there is a queue. So, these indicate the customers who are waiting in the queue for to, to be serviced 
you have a service facility and then again uh, it will depend on what kind of service facility you have and the, so the customer so one by one a customer comes here gets serviced then exits from the system after his service uh, his or her service is completed then the next one in the queue comes for to be uh, so this is uh, i'm describing the situation when there's only uh, one service facility or one clerk at a counter or something is there more than one then of course the moment one of the uh, clerks is free the um, person waiting in the queue will go, will go and get serviced. Right? So, whatever it is, is there is a service facility, the customers come, they get serviced and once their service is complete, we expect that they leave the system. So, they are out of the system. Okay. Now, here uh, in order to um, discuss the model, we first, so we, we need to um, specify the arrival pattern of the customers. Right? So, this can be either specified by the arrival rate and the, uh, the distribution of the arrival, um, uh, uh, distribution of the arrivals, because remember the whole situ the thing that scenario is that uh, the um, uh, events are uh, unpredictable. So, we do not know when a customer will walk in, also we have no idea uh, the, the service times are also unpredictable. So, therefore, everything has to be modeled through these probability distributions and so uh, we will either specify the distribution of the arrivals just as in the Poisson process we say that the uh, arrivals are coming at a rate whatever the rate is lambda and then they are um, being modeled by the Poisson distribution and uh, or we give the uh, specify the distribution of the inter arrival times which we saw that if the arrivals are uh, following a uh, Poisson distribution, then the inter arrival times will be exponentially distributed. And uh, then we had uh, in the last few lectures, we have talked about in detail what uh, under what conditions we can uh, say that the arrival pattern can be modeled by the Poisson distribution. And so, I stationary increments and then independent increments and so on, and then that the uh, probability of uh, uh, arrival in a small interval would be only lambda times the length of that interval and so on. So, there were a huge uh, lot of uh, conditions under which we, um, we said that we can then model the arrival pattern by the Poisson distribution. right? Then you have the service facility and here of course, you can specify the distribution of the service times. As I said that it is not a, a fixed operation. Uh, each customer may take different amount of time and so on. So, uh, we have to uh, and then of course, you need to specify the number of servers. So, basically if you have these three um, uh, things specified, then your uh, queuing model is there. And uh, the m denotes the exponential distribution of inter arrival times, memory less this is the property or Markovian, which we will again when we later discuss, later discuss Markov, Markov processes, we will see that uh, Markovian uh, processes also have memory uh, have memory less property. Right? So, inter arrival uh, times are exponentially distributed and uh, ex service is also service times are also exponentially distributed. So, therefore, um, uh, this and, and one server. So, first we will discuss the uh, case when the um, there is only one server at the service facility and later on we will try to generalize the uh, uh, analysis to more than one server. Okay. Now, um, just as we um, specified the um, conditions under which we can model the arrival pattern by the Poisson process, we need to uh, look at conditions under which service times can be modeled as exponential distribution by an exponential distribution. Now, if, if a server is performing a fixed um, some fixed sequence of operations for each customer, then certainly this is not memory less, because uh, if the customer if the uh, clerk has to perform uh, 10 operations a sequence of 10 operations for every customer, then when he is he is uh, come up to the 8th uh, this thing uh, task, then we will uh, know that he is going to finish after next two. So, the, the sort of um, one can uh, one can assess the time taken for example, if, if a server has come up to this point, I mean these task is performed, then we know that he will finish these two. And so, the, uh, the time at which the service will end depends on how far he has been already with the customer 
how far he has been uh, servicing the customer. So, therefore, there is certainly not a case for um, uh, uh, modeling by exponential distributions, right, because this is uh, some sort of um, uh, a fixed sequence of operations. So, therefore, here also we will have to be basically uh, it will have to be the memoryless property, if you can uh, uh, somehow justify that uh, the service facility or the situation that you are modeling has this property, then it will be uh, uh, you know safe to say that yes, we can model the um, service times by the exponential distribution and so on. Right. Okay. Uh, so, then uh, and the state of the system, we will always specify by the number of people in the system and then p n will be the probability that there are n people in the system. So, you can see that it is um, the people coming for service, after being serviced, they leave the system. So, it is you know a constant state of changing because uh, people come and go. So, p n is the probability that there are n people in the system. So, therefore, um, in time 0 t, uh, yeah, okay, here I should uh, have underlined this, but I sort of uh, missed it right now. So, the, the whole thing is being discussed under steady state situation. So, now what we are saying is that, suppose there is a new uh, restaurant that has opened in the locality, then you know um, uh, the number of arrivals uh, would vary from day to day and there will be no uh, set pattern for some time till people sort of uh, get used to that restaurant or they make it a habit or so whatever it is. And there are a steady uh, number of customers who come to the uh, place uh, to the restaurant. So, therefore, uh, what we are saying here is that the, we are discussing all this, uh, when the uh, system has settled down, the turbulations are all over and it is only uh, the steady state, that means the probabilities have also settled down and so on. So, under steady state, we are discussing uh, uh, the uh, modeling of this uh, queuing, uh, 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 modeling the queuing situation. Okay. So, um, therefore, uh, if uh, p n is the probability that there are n people in the system, then in time 0 t. So, this uh, total time for which the system is in, see you can also look upon p n as the proportion of time for which the um, for a unit time, a portion of a unit time uh, in which the system uh, is in state n. That means, there are n people, remember, because this is a probability that there are n. So, this is a fraction and therefore, we are saying the fraction of time that people, there are n people in the system. right? And therefore, over the, t over the time interval 0 t, we will say that the total time for which the system is in state, uh, state n, sorry, it is not p n, is in state n is in state n is p n t, right. So, approximately we will say that proportion of time that uh, there are uh, in this time interval, proportion of time for which there are n people in the system is p n t. Okay. And um, therefore, uh, number and number of arrivals in 0 t that find the system in state n is roughly lambda p n t. So, we are talking in approximations and Right, because the arrival rate is lambda. So, the number of arrivals in 0 t that find the system in state n would be lambda p n t, okay, because there are lambda arrivals in a unit of time. And so, um, the, I mean the arrival rate is lambda. Okay. So, and this is also called a birth and death process, because a birth refers to a new arrival to the system and a death refers to a, a departure of from the system. So, therefore, um, each departure is treated as a death and each arrival, new arrival is treated as a birth. So, this is also called as a birth and death process. And so, this birth and death process under the assumption that your uh, arrival rate is uh, uh, process is Poisson and the service, uh, the uh, service time is exponentially distributed. There is one server. So, if you diagrammatically, you can describe the uh, situation here of the birth and death process. You begin with state 0, uh, no people in the system, then one arrival takes place, uh, this should be lambda and so you go to state 1, but from state 1 you can revert back to state 0 if there is a departure and that is for this. So, we are saying that the exponential, the service time is exponentially distributed with um, rate mu right? and then um, Again, when you are in state 1, it can go to uh, state 2 by arrival okay, and uh, it can revert back to state 1, because if there is a departure and so on. 
So, that means, at each state n minus 1 for example, you can go to the next state and from this you can revert back to the old state. Uh, and so, therefore, this makes sense that you will uh, this proportion of time you will be in state n, right, because the situation keeps changing. So, let us uh, further analyze uh, the um, you know uh, arrival pattern, mean arrival or uh, the average arrival time, uh, average waiting time and so on. Uh, you see, uh, when I uh, made the statement that we are considering the system, uh, the queuing system in steady state. So, we actually just, I just meant this that limit probability of n t equal to n as t goes to infinity is p n. So, this is steadying down and of course, uh, t, uh, t going to infinity is uh, the analytical way of saying it, but uh, essentially uh, for a large time the system has operated and then it has settled down to a steady state that is what you mean. So, these are the uh, limiting probabilities essentially okay, of the system. Uh, so, and uh, then uh, so for example, if you say that p 0 is 0 0.3, then in the long run system will be empty of customers 30 percent of the time. Right. Again, you know, because these are all probabilistic statements. So, what we are saying is that if your p 0 is 0 0.3, then if in the long run if you observe the system, then you will find that 30 percent of the time the uh, uh, system is empty. And that is what we meant when I said that p n t is the proportion of time. Uh, and so, this is again in the uh, long run when you observe p n t will be approximately the uh, uh, proportion of time. Uh, for which the uh, uh, system has n people in the system, which has uh, the system has n, n people, n customers, n users, whatever it is. So, this is the idea. Okay. So, and similarly, if p 1 is 0 0.2, then the system has one customer 20 percent of the time, I mean, if you observe, observe it for a long. And so, uh, approximately for time t, we can approximately say that this is the uh, proportion of time that the uh, uh, system will have uh, n customers. Okay, fine. Now, um, we want to uh, start uh, uh, getting some more uh, you know uh, some uh, you know we want to get some uh, uh, make some computations regarding this uh, queuing system. And so, uh, we will uh, use this concept of balance equations. What, what we mean is that for each n greater than 0, the rate at which the process enters the state n equals the rate at which it leaves state n. So, this is also part of the system that uh, you know uh, our uh, the conditions under which we are uh, modeling the situation or the process. So, what we are saying is that the balance is maintained. In other words, what we are saying is that if you are state 1, you see, then uh, you are uh, leaving it here by uh, because uh, uh, one more arrival has come or you are leaving state 1, because one person has been serviced. Okay. So, this is how uh, uh, the uh, state 1 changes either one more arrival or one uh, death or one uh, uh, person leaving the system. And uh, then again uh, the way state 1 is reached is also from state 0, when there is a one arrival at this. So, then you come to state 1 and again here again you come from state 2, when um, there is a departure here at this point. So, this is the idea. So, at each state of the system you have. Uh, so, for example, when you are in state 0, then this is the rate at which so lambda p 0. So, it, uh, this is the rate at which the system leaves the state 0, right? because it is state 0, then lambda uh, arrival. Okay. Uh, I mean, uh, the uh, mean arrival, uh, this is uh, I should not say mean, the uh, rate arrival rate is lambda. Therefore, lambda into p 0, this should be. So, the, this is the rate at which it will leave the system. Uh, see, the system right now is in state 0. So, it will leave that the system leaves that state at the rate lambda p 0. And uh, uh, it from p 1, it arrives to state 0 at the rate of mu p 1. And therefore, the two must balance. Okay. So, the rate at which uh, it uh, changes its state from 0 uh, and arrives at 1 and the rate at which it uh, um, leaves state 1 and arrives at 0 is mu p 1. So, the 2 must equal. Okay. Now, if you are in state 1 as I was describing you, then you see um, it is the, the two ways it can leave either one more arrival or one departure. 
So, therefore, lambda plus mu into p 1, because remember the two processes we assumed are independent, the um, service, uh, service process and the uh, arrival processes are both independent. So, therefore, I can add up the uh, these rates. So, uh, this will be lambda plus mu into p 1. This is how it will uh, leave the system uh, p 1, uh, the state p 1. And uh, if it is p p 2, then it can again come back to p 1. Uh, at the rate of mu p 2 and here uh, from uh, p 0 it can come to p 1 at the rate of lambda p 0. So, therefore, the departure from state 1 uh, and the arrival to state 1, the rate at which uh, this these two things happen must be the same. Right. And so, in general again the same thing, but uh, n for example, you are leaving it again uh, because there is an arrival and you are leaving it because there is a departure. So, therefore, these two lambda plus mu and then you are um, uh, coming to state uh, n through n minus 1 at the rate of lambda uh, p n and then you are uh, sorry p n minus 1 lambda p n minus 1 and then here uh, you are coming from n plus 1 at the rate of mu p n plus 1. So, therefore, in general you can write this. Now, here of course, uh, if uh, I am I'm only considering a very simple form here, because uh, you can also have a situation where your lambdas are also dependent on the uh, people in the system, but we are see, because that can happen. You know, in some places where it is not a very essential service, uh, if the place is crowded, for example, if a restaurant people may not want to wait and they will leave the place, because they can go elsewhere to eat. Right. So, then uh, your uh, uh, lambdas would be the arrival rates would also be dependent on what state the system is in. Okay. And uh, similarly, the mu's can also depend on uh, your uh, the number of people there are in the customers there are in the system. So, these can be different for different states of the system, but I am right now considering the uh, most uh, the basic uh, case where all the lambdas. So, these are not dependent on the number of people in the system. Similarly, the mu is not dependent on the uh, number of people in the system. So, the service rate continues at the same uh, pace. Okay. So, uh, now if you solve these equations, see here immediately you get that p 1 is lambda by mu p naught. So, let us get all these p s in terms of uh, p naught. And then similarly from here, if you substitute for uh, p 1 uh, from here, then mu p 2 would be lambda plus mu into lambda by mu p naught minus lambda p naught. Okay. This goes this here and then if you simplify, you get uh, p 2 as lambda by mu whole square into p naught. So, in general your uh, solution to these equations, these balance equations uh, is p n is equal to lambda by mu raised to n times p naught. So, all for all n this will be the formula that means, uh, it is just lambda by mu raised to n p naught. Right. Now, we can obtain um, p naught by using the fact that uh, all these probabilities must add up to 1. Right. The system must be in one of the states from 0 to infinity and therefore, uh, uh, when you add up this, you get this as a, a geometric series p naught is outside with common ratio lambda by mu and so, uh, p naught is 1 minus lambda by mu, because this sums to 1 upon this series sums to 1 upon 1 minus lambda by lambda by mu. Right. So, therefore, uh, p naught would be 1 minus lambda by mu. Now, of course, um, this is valid only uh, th this series converges provided your lambda by mu is less than 1, because otherwise it will explode. And you can also see uh, of course, uh, mathematically you know that this series will converge only if lambda by mu is less than 1. If lambda by mu is not uh, is greater than 1 or even equal to 1, then this will uh, not converge. So, the sum will explode. And so, what does it mean? See here, when you say that lambda is less than mu, that means lambda is less than uh, sorry, lambda by mu less than 1, then it implies that lambda is less than mu, right. And so, this is the uh, this is the uh, uh, service rate and this is the arrival rate. So, obviously, you want you expect that otherwise people will go on collecting in the system, if your service is slower than the uh, rate at which people are coming or in other words, the better way to look at it is that 1 by mu is less than 1 by lambda. 
So, mean service time is 1 by mu, remember, because it is exponential mu. So, therefore, the mean time is 1 by mu. So, mean service time is 1 by mu. Now, this should be less than and 1 by lambda is the mean time between arrivals, remember, because the uh, if, if the arrival uh, 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 process is Poisson with rate lambda, then the inter arrival times are exponential with uh, rate with parameter lambda and therefore, the mean time between two arrivals will be 1 by lambda. So, in general you expect that 1 by mu should be that means, the service mean service time should be less than the mean time between two arrivals. Right. So, therefore, th then only you expect uh, the system not to explode that means, the Q will not explode and uh, you will be able to um, process the uh, customers um, faster than uh, they come. In, in, I mean, in a loose way, you are saying that it will not happen, right. So, uh, therefore, um, uh, this makes sense that and so, once you get your p naught as 1 minus lambda by mu, from here you get that your p n is lambda by mu raised to n into 1 minus lambda by mu for all n. So, therefore, uh, we in a nice way, we have been able to uh, compute the probabilities uh, for uh, the different states of the system right under these assumptions. And uh, you, there are many more ways of explaining this, but basically the whole idea is that this should be even from other even otherwise from here you see you can just see uh, that uh, p naught being a finite must be because it is a probability of uh, empty system. Then if lambda is greater than mu, then this will go on becoming larger and larger. So, here uh, prob there will be a positive probability for uh, you know, uh, n being uh, well, uh, this is uh, yes, uh, yeah, because p naught will uh, take care of it, p n cannot be, uh, but what I am saying is there will be a positive probability of uh, the system becoming, uh, you know, the number of people increasing in the system, because lambda by mu raised to n, if lambda is greater than mu, then that will be uh, become this start becoming a big number. Okay, fine. Now, uh, if you want to uh, find out the average number of customers in the system. Uh, so, therefore, you want to know that at any point of time, what is the average number of people and mostly uh, when you design a facility, you base it on the um, average number of customers in the system, because you should at least be able to cater to the average number of people in the system and then of course, there can be variations. So, um, uh, that means, L here is we will define. So, L is the average number of people in the system okay. and so this will be sigma n p and n varying from 0 to infinity, because the probability of there being n people in the system is uh, uh, p n. So, n into p n the expectation of uh, this uh, p n I mean of the variable denoting the or you can say that may be L n is the uh, this thing. Uh, random variable whose probability is n. So, or okay, we have been sorry, uh, you can we have been denoting it by, but that was n t. Okay. So, it does not matter, let us just keep it that this way. So, this will sigma n varying from 0 to infinity n p n will give you the average number of people in the system. So, here substitute for uh, p n and since this is uh, not, uh, this is independent of n. I will just uh, concentrate on this. So, let me call this uh, series uh, sigma, uh, uh, sigma n lambda by mu raise to n, n to 0 to infinity. Let me call this s. So, I just write it out you know like this. Then I multiply this by lambda by mu s and I, I just because see the, the infinite terms in the series, uh, I can start writing this from here does not matter. This sum I can just you know slip one position and so I start writing it from here and again both the things are expand, uh, extending to infinity. Now, when you subtract this from here, it will be 1 minus lambda by mu s and here you see this is 0. So, this is lambda by mu then this is 2 lambda by mu square and this is lambda mu by uh, lambda by mu whole square. So, therefore, the difference is again this. And this is, you know, anyway, uh, some those of you who are familiar know that this is an arithmetico geometric series. Arithmetico geometric series. 
Yeah, so the terms are the first term is changing as an arithmetic progression and the second term is uh, as changing as a geometric progression or coming from a geometric progression. So, arithmetico a geometric series fine. So, the way to uh, sum up such a series is that you write down s and then you write lambda by mu s just uh, slip the uh, writing the terms from you know second position for this you write to start writing from second position and then you get uh, the difference comes out to be a uh, geometric series. And therefore, uh, well here the first term is lambda by mu. So, I will write lambda by mu into 1 upon 1 minus lambda by mu. Right. So, therefore, your s is lambda by mu into because this is this. So, 1 minus lambda by mu whole square right. And so, your l because l had a 1 minus lambda by mu here. So, then uh, that will get cancelled. So, therefore, the uh, average number of people in the system is lambda by mu upon 1 minus lambda by mu. Okay. And so, here you see that even if, uh, if this is large that means, if this is close to uh, 1, large in the sense of course, because we cannot come to this expression, uh, if lambda is greater than mu, then this, uh, this does not, I mean we cannot even talk about the average number of people in the system, because the system would have exploded. So, uh, lambda by mu less than 1, if it is close to 1, then you see this number is small, and so 1 upon this will be very large. And therefore, uh, again the number of people in the system will, will be very large. So, this definitely gives you the, uh, the idea as to how uh, you know the, the lambda by mu uh, has to be uh, small for efficient service. And if you try it, if you uh, are not able to keep lambda by mu uh, much, much smaller than uh, 1, then certainly there will be uh, case, there will be times and there will be chaos, because this is only talking about the average number of people in the system. right? So, therefore, this gives you an idea that if lambda by mu is uh, reasonably small, then uh, this number will also be reasonably small. And so, most of the time, I mean uh, on the average you will expect that there will be not too many people waiting to be serviced. So, uh, now the other, um, uh, the other um, uh, characteristic of a queuing, uh, of a good queuing model is that the amount of time a customer spends in the system should not be very high. So, therefore, we want to now uh, estimate the average amount of time a customer spends in the system. So, again that will depend, that will be a function of lambda and mu, your arrival rate and the uh, service rates. right? So, let us uh, find out this. Now, if an arrival finds n customers in the system, the arrival will have to wait through n plus 1 exponential service times, because n people are already in the system and he or she is the uh, n plus 1 th arrival in the system. So, there is then before by the when the n plus 1 th arrival uh, leaves the system, that means uh, n plus 1 services have been completed. Right. Now, the thing is that there is already one customer being serviced because there are n minus 1 people in the queue and there is then there is one person who is being serviced. But because of this memoryless property, we cannot say that uh, you know uh, that this service how long he has been uh, at the counter and therefore, uh, how long he will take more. We cannot say anything about it. This is that is at much uh, um, unpredictable uh, quantity as when he started the service. So, therefore, uh, because of this memoryless property, I have to count uh, that also as one full service. And therefore, we are saying that uh, there will be um, n plus 1 services to be completed before this arrival who finds there are n customers in the system finally, leaves the system. right? So, therefore, um, your s n plus 1 will be t 1 plus t 2 plus t n plus 1 uh, n varying from 0, 1, 2, so on. So, this is uh, and this is the conditional waiting time given there are n customers in the system. right? because um, S n plus 1 means your conditional waiting time given there are n customers in the system and therefore, n plus 1 services have to be completed. Now, we know since uh, the uh, service times are exponentially distributed, we know that uh, some of these n plus 1 uh, exponential identically independently distributed exponential random variables will be gamma n plus 1 comma mu. So, the same parameter, but since there are n 1 of them. So, this becomes a gamma n plus 1 comma mu, your s n plus 1 is this. And so, uh, when you want to compute the probability that the uh, average waiting time is greater than t, 
or that is the expected uh, uh, value, expected waiting time, then uh, uh, this is sigma n varying from 0 to infinity p n. So, conditional probability remember this is conditional. So, p n into s n plus 1 greater than t. So, you will write this as uh, this is probability that s n plus 1 is greater than t. So, your services the n plus 1 services take more than t time to be completed and uh, uh, the probability that there are n people in the system then, then only n plus 1 services have to be completed. So, this is sigma n varying from 0 to infinity. So, substitute for p n then you will get lambda by mu raise to n 1 minus lambda by mu into probability s n plus 1 greater than t. So, this you can write as 1 minus f w t, because uh, uh, this is if I am saying that f, f w is the uh, uh, distribution function of w. And similarly, um, f n plus 1 t I am denoting as the uh, distribution function for s n plus 1. So, therefore, uh, this is what I can write. Now, um, I can just differentiate both sides. So, this of course, is 0. I get the uh, so, the minus sign minus sign will cancel out, because uh, see this is not a function of t. So, here um, this will be minus and minus so that will cancel out and what you will get is that f w t is equal to this whole thing and this is your gamma n plus 1 uh, mu uh, p d f right mu e raise to minus mu t and mu t raise to n upon n factorial. Okay. And uh, now, let us just simplify. So, um, what I will do is, this is independent of n, this is independent of n. So, the only quantity, you see there is mu in the denominator here, mu raise to n and there is a mu raise to n in the numerator. So, the two will cancel out and therefore, I will simply be left with lambda t raise to n upon n factorial. The other things can be all taken out. So, lambda t raise to n upon n factorial, you sum up this from n 0 to infinity and no, this is a very familiar um, uh, series for us and so this will be e raise to uh, lambda t. <coughs> so, so, therefore, I can combine it with this. So, therefore, e raise to minus mu minus lambda t. Remember, mu is greater than lambda. Okay. And so, um, if you uh, simplify this expression mu minus lambda upon mu uh, cancels with mu. So, it is mu minus lambda e raise to minus mu minus lambda t and this is exponential mu minus lambda. Right. And therefore, you immediately know that the expected value of w is 1 upon mu minus lambda. Right. And this, if you remember the expression for L was, uh, okay, I will not uh, see what was the expression for L, uh, that was lambda mu minus lambda. Right. So, therefore, um, the expected waiting time is L by lambda or what it means is that your um, average. Uh, so, this was the average number of people in the system will be lambda times the um, average waiting time uh, that a customer spends. Okay. So, you, this and this is known as uh, the famous, uh, this should be t here, Little's uh, formula. So, uh, this is attributed to Little, who first uh, you know gave this <coughs> relationship between L and W. <coughs> So, this is again you can you know say it out in words, so that you do not. Okay. And then if you want to find out uh, the probability that w is greater than t, then since we have the um, p d f for w, this will be t to infinity mu minus lambda e raise to minus mu minus lambda t d t, which we know is this therefore, right. e raise to minus mu minus lambda t. So, uh, what can you say here, here again if you want to say that uh, yeah, so, this probability that your um, average waiting time would be greater than t, again you can uh, talk about it in terms of mu and lambda, right, because this is essentially equal to 1 upon e raise to mu minus lambda t. So, this if you want this probability to be small, then uh, obviously, your uh, mu should be uh, greater than uh, lambda quite uh, you know substantially. So, that this probability then is small, because e raise to mu minus lambda t would be large and so 1 upon that would be small and so on. See, see all these uh, relationships and these quantities, they will help you to uh, in modeling a very efficient queuing system and depending on what parameters you consider 
uh, important, you can accordingly concentrate on those and then accordingly you know uh, design your system, so that your mu and lambda conform to that. So, that in the sense that if you want this problem, if you want your L to be uh, small, that means you do not want a place to be crowded all the time, then you concentrate on this. And if you, if it is important that people should not have to wait for a long time, then you will concentrate on this, right. But the two are related. So, L is equal to L uh, w and therefore, uh, you can see if you concentrate on this, you concentrate on this depending uh, you know with respect to lambda. Okay. Now, uh, the other quantity would be uh, expected q length. See, L was the expected number of people in the system, which includes the person being uh, serviced, but now here you are talking about expected q length. And so, that will be n minus 1 into p n, because if there are n people in the system, one person is being serviced. So, then the number of people in the q are n minus 1, right. And this summation will be from 1 to infinity. Okay, because if you have uh, n people, then one person is certainly being serviced, and there is therefore n minus people, n minus one people are waiting in the queue. So that will be uh, so you want to compute the expected value of L q of the uh, people in the queue, right? Which is L q. So then this is n minus one into p n. Now I can separate it out as n p n minus sigma one n varying from one to infinity p n. Right. So, this we know is L, because anyway when n is 0, the contribution is 0. So, this is also the same as L. So, that I write as L and sigma n varying from 1 to infinity to p n is actually 1 minus p 0, because when you add p 0, then the whole thing adds up to 1. So, 1 minus p 0. So, this is it. So, L upon uh, lambda upon mu minus lambda is your value of L, then 1 minus 1 minus lambda by mu, this is p naught. So, therefore, this becomes your so, that means, this is essentially lambda by mu into L, right, because lambda upon mu minus lambda is your L and this is lambda upon mu into L. So, interesting uh, uh, this thing and uh, what you can see or in fact, the Littles formula also says that w q should be uh, uh, lambda times w q should be L q and we will show this also because here lambda times w is l. So, uh, lambda times w q should be l q. One can derive this result also. See w I have used as a random variable uh, the notation w for a random variable that denotes the waiting time. And then I computed e expected value of w, but then again in the Littles formula I, this should be capital L. Uh, in the Littles formula I again use the word w only. So, um, what I am trying to say is that, because of the Littles formula they used, uh, they use L capital L capital W. So, I did not want to change it, but then uh, what I feel is that there is not really much confusion uh, in using W, uh, you know use, using the same notation for the random variable as well as, as, well as for the uh, expected value. Because you see when you are computing this probabilities like this, then it is clear that W is being used as a random variable because you do not associate probability uh, expected value of w is not a random variable. So, you will not associate probabilities with it, right. So, therefore, probability w greater than t is to be computed, it is clear that w is the waiting time random variable. And when w is used for uh, denoting the expected waiting time, it is clear from, from the, the Littles formula, that it is clear that uh, uh, the, this w denotes the expected value. Yes, okay. maybe one could have used uh, two different notations, but uh, that is ok. I just want to make sure, th uh, I mean make it clear that it should be possible to see from the reference to the context, in what way uh, uh, w is being used. And the same holds for w q, because w q I am using as a notation for denoting the random variable for the waiting time in the q you know just before you uh, get ser your turn comes to be serviced. So, before that the time you spend in the system. So, this is a rate random variable denoted by w q and again in the Littles formula, uh, we will use um, uh, the for the expected value of w q, I am again using the uh, notation w q only. So, the same reasoning that it should uh, not cause any confusion and one should be able to see uh, from the reference to the context, what, uh, in what way uh, w and w q are being used. So, please keep this in mind.